his uh, speech was impersonated and the company lost about uh, USD 25 million. Welcome back to Taylor's Take. In this episode, we're going to be talking about deepfake and AI. My name is Hira Damarsasi, and today I'm accompanied by Dr. Ambikai, Program Director of LLB. So let's talk about deepfake for a second. What is deepfake? Deepfake is a type of AI that creates convincing images, audios, and video hoaxes. So deepfake can be tricky and confusing at times. So how can we actually navigate through this world? The deepfake has become a problem, I must say. In the entertainment industry, if you see, a lot of actors has been resurrected to fit into roles of famous actors uh, in order to create better movies. In the social media platform, if we look at it, uh, deep fake technology has been used in tremendous situations. Uh, some politicians' uh, speeches have been used to spread uh, misinformation. This is going to open up a lot of uh, floodgate in litigation because they can be sued yeah, for saying things that they are not actually saying. Yes. Yeah. In 2019, there was a case in the US about politician Nancy Pelosi and she was delivering a speech, but somebody created a deepfake of her where she was slurring her words and she was intoxicated and incoherent. This also happened in businesses. As you mentioned, um, there was an incident in the US. Uh, recently, this happened in Hong Kong, I see. where one of the top-notch CEO of a company, uh, his uh, speech was um, impersonated and um, it led to financial fraud and scam. Really? And yes, and, and the company lost about uh, USD 25 million. 25 million? Yes, because of uh, this uh, abuse. Is there a certain act where somebody could prevent this, perhaps? If you look at deep fake technology, this is something where the content is created by using some formula of a computer program. Yeah. So this computer program actually governed by the Copyright Act, oh. all right? Uh, it is seen as a literary work, yeah. right? So literary work means something that you write, something that you paint, mm -hmm. right? So here, the law under copyright can also come into force. Mm -hmm. We don't have a deep fake technology act in force, but we can use these Several different act. measures, these mechanisms to actually uh, protect uh, the victim. Major social media platforms have actually taken uh, measures to prevent this type of thing from happening. I know that Twitter and Facebook, both of them have fact checkers. You could actually see through the updates. This is AI generated. This is doctored. I feel like there's also a certain limitation when it comes to these things because we can never know what actually constitutes this deep fake. How do we as a society come to measures with deep fake? If you look at our Communications and Multimedia Act, right, uh, it does provide measures for people who use or publish online content uh, with the intention to annoy, abuse, uh, threaten or harass the other person. So the victim is, um, to a large extent, are protected under this act. We do have all these laws to protect the victims, uh, as well as other sort of uh, legal recourse. So it is left in the hands of the, um, the victims to actually come forward and to make a complaint and to address these issues. Closing on our session, I would like to thank Dr. Ambikai for being here with us today. You're welcome. Comment down below how we could stay more vigilant with defect. If you're wondering how, here are some useful tips for prevention and to take action if you've been victimized by deepfake. Stay safe out there.